I'm sorry about the delay. Um, very welcome to the seminar. My name is Anna Wigenmark. I'm the sec Secretary General for uh, Woodfront, the Swedish Human Rights and Democracy Movement. Um, we are the host for the, of the Human Rights Forum that you're attending today and prob probably the next couple of days. Uh, and we've been working with education, information and opinion making on uh, human rights and democracy for almost 50 years. Um, mainly we do our work in Sweden, but, but a couple of years ago um, we started to look at one of our very uh, powerful neighbours in the situation for democracy and human rights there in Russia. Um, and we started to give, bring attention to the situation that occurred after the inauguration, new inauguration of President Putin in 2012, after massive demonstrations from the public. Um, and we could see that so many people were uh, incarcerated and giving long sentences only for demonstrating, using false witnesses and things like that. In that work, in that process, we also saw how cultural workers, artists, musicians, writers, playwriters were also targeted by um, the government. So we started to look at freedom of expression for cultural workers as well. And this is what we will talk about today. We will talk about freedom of expression for cultural workers, but also for those who are incarcerated and for even and looking at what is happening now uh, in 2018 and how the repression actually hits even younger and younger demonstrators, even sometimes torturing them. Um, by my side, I have Maria Masha Leokina from Pussy Riot, who will be... <laughs> You're welcome. And uh, Mikhail Borsikin, who is... Uh, who is the lead singer and, and, and uh, um, um, frontman of the band Televisor, uh, who has been, and that band has been up and running for, since the 80s, I think. Um, we will actually start off with the song by Mikhail. Uh, so sit, sit tight and wait for the discussions, and we'll just hear a song. It will be in Russian. We will have a Swedish uh, translation uh, behind us, uh, but I will try to explain for those and talk to Mikhail afterwards what it's about, what the song is about. So please, Mikhail. <laughs> Средневековье Властелин колец отдыхает Реальность данная нам в уе Рулит, зажигает Променяли серпы на кресты Были некири чистые Покупали, продавали, соблюдали посты Православные чекисты Ой, мама, мама, матрица Ты будешь молчать, жрать и верить Золотого тельца, цветого отца Великой империи Заколотите подвал, воняет Крысы в мавзолее, все наглее и злее Власть гуляет На свежих могилах растут курши Пересмерти кремлевская тварь Заколотите подвал Заколотите подвал Культура, ура, 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 новые услуги порно рынка, корпорация добра продолжает свою вечеринку, какой-то зомби бомон, дракеры, святоши, журналисты, артисты лижут, хозяйское дерьмо так искренне. Образа и образы врага И ежедневно, внутривенно Священным союзом царя и совка Бредит Кремлец Блять, заколотите подвал Воняет Красим мавзолей, все наглее и злее Власть гуляет На свежих могилах растут Курши бели смерти Кремлевская тупая заколотите подвал Какая вера, очнись ты, это неохристы, чекисты, родина, брат, три зрачки-то, это неохристы, чекисты, вера, очнись ты, это неохристы, чекисты, родина, брат, три зрачки-то, это неохристы, чекисты, разуй, 
глаза, разуй глаза, разуй глаза, разуй глаза, разуй глаза. Не хочу назад, не хочу назад, не хочу назад, не хочу назад. Чемодан показал совок, 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 чемодан показал совок. Thank you. Well, uh, Mikhail, there might be those here who don't speak either Russian or, or Swedish. Can you tell us a little bit in English what the song is about? Uh, <laughs> it's probably about this new parasite, I would call them who rule over Russia nowadays. It's a new gang. I call them neo christa Chikisti, which means uh, new uh, Christian KGBists, let's, uh, let's say, <laughs> let's put it like this. So that's uh, about stinking of the past. Mm. So it's uh, the rats in the mausoleum, they're, they're uh, revived somehow. Mm -hmm. And so they uh, survived and they started ruling over, uh, over the future. Mm. And yeah, that's mm. what the song yeah, is about. Yeah, so yes. we have to nail down the cellar mm -hmm. to stop to this. Keep them out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Вообще супер, просто... Мы еще 2009 -го, кстати. Я слушаю, даже если послушать. Thank you. Um, yeah. Телевизор and you, you have been, as I mentioned, um, a band since the 80s. And uh, uh, can you, for those who don't know anything about Televisor in Sweden, what, what kind of band are you? Would you just, for example, describe yourselves as a political band or a rock band with political views? Or if, if, if there is a difference, how would you describe your ah, we were we, we were named political group in, in uh, eight, 1985. But by journalists, but we were not, of course. We, we were just a uh, rock band. We played new wave music in Leningrad Rock Club uh, at this time. So uh, we were uh, famous for some protest songs uh, at that time. Mm -hmm. That's why we got this label, political group. Mm -hmm. But we have 13 albums and there are a lot of lyrical, philosophical and other kind of stuff. So, so I don't consider myself uh, oh. A political, um, uh, how to say, the only uh, political artist. No, but uh, at the same time, you have not been afraid to criticize sort of the regime or what is happening in Russia if you feel that something is going wrong. And you have been doing that also since the 80s, even during the Soviet era uh, or period. Sorry, rather, um, is there is there a difference you think today from? From uh, the eight, compared to the 80s, I mean, when it comes to the, the re how the regime reacts to your music, or is yeah, it similar? Yeah, yeah, there is a, quite a lot of differences. Uh, I mean, the uh, the main thing for me is the atmosphere in the society, the people's minds. We uh, got that kind of uh, wind of changes in the end of 80s which inspired us mm -hmm. to and uh, which supported us and uh, we were just uh, w w we were very ironical about the regime at that time about the soviet regime uh, and now it's not not so funny anymore i mean a lot of people really seriously changed their minds during the last three years, four years, uh, especially after the uh, invasion in Ukraine. Uh, and a lot of my friends started seriously thinking that uh, uh, Russia should be empire, uh, should re uh, revive all those uh, uh, imperialistic uh, values. Uh, and that's why it's, it's different and it's harder. Mm. It's harder, and of course, it's more sophisticated, I should say. It's, uh, uh, they really use all uh, modern media to influence people, which was not possible in the 80s. I mean, these co uh, net, nets, computer nets and everything, so they, uh, it's billions of uh, dollars uh, w w which are going to uh, spread fake news and all that stuff uh, right now, which makes it... Uh, uh, harder to resist 
mm-hmm. for people's minds. Mm-hmm. So that's the difference. So they buy their uh, message in that yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay. M- Masha, uh, if um, if Mi- if Michael is a musician first, would you say that you are a political activist rather first and then uh, part of a rock band, or how do you combine the? We are not two rock band. I'm not <laughs> musician. Um, unfortunately, I mean, uh, but uh, Pussy Riot is. Um, like a big collective uh, of uh, totally different people who are doing uh, protest art uh, in different forms. And uh, I think uh, these forms which we already, let's say, done or tried, uh, it's not, you know, the end. Uh, I hope we will create uh, more forms. Uh, but yes, six years ago, uh, when Putin decided to be a president for the third time, uh, we started to do protest actions. And for me, first uh, action was um, a song, Putin Pissed His Pants, uh, which we made in the Red Square. And, um, well, after that, uh, I think for, for me personally and for, for Pussy Riot, that was, you know, uh, something which we did not uh, feel before, uh, like state uh, recognized that we, you know, exist. And uh, that was uh, just one month before before the elections, and we decided to do another song, Mother Mary Banish Putin. We performed 40 seconds of the song in the Cathedral of Christ the Savior, and then they opened the criminal case on uh, hooliganism motivated by religious hatred. And uh, we spent two years in prison after that. Um, So the main thing is, you probably know about our case. Uh, That was, you know, kind of a big scandal uh, that time. But now in Russia, they open criminal cases like this almost every week. Mm -hmm. So it became a part of everyday reality. And it's not only about artists or, you know, activists. Uh, It could be open against just, like, usual people. Uh, They can open a criminal case because of the Facebook post, because of the retweet, um, because, you know, you just talking with somebody in the cafe, in the group about politics or you're going with a single protest uh, to the Red Square. So it's really became, you know, another country. Totally, yeah. Can, we'll talk more about the new sort of new arrests toward, and, and young people being arrested uh, a bit later, but can I just uh, ask you, because um, the way you, your protests are much more visual and uh, expressive and sometimes very and unconventional than, for example, Mikhail through his songs, and why did you decide, was it necessary to be that expressive? Uh, why did you feel that it was? Um, wouldn't you? Didn't you think that you would be heard otherwise? Or, or why did you choose that kind of um, methods? That was like a three, not right now, but like in 2012, for example. Was it a way of? of uh because there is, um, I cannot say you know tradition no. uh, of actionism, but it's um, it's how actions are working. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, it's not enough just to write down your position. Uh, visual, visual part is have same importance than that that mm-hmm. text. Mm. So the video, uh, the song, and I believe music actually can you know change the world. And uh, in a lot of countries, it is it 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 was a part of uh, protest movement. So mm. probably this why this yeah. why. Yeah. But if we will come back to reality, I think uh, for for my opinion and why I am here, uh, I want to talk about people who are behind bars now, mm. because they need help. And um, yep. 
we'll, we'll have, we have an hour, so we'll be managing <laughs> that as well, yeah. just because I think many people are very interested in your background and what happened to you as well. So I'll just a couple of questions uh, on that. Um, because you were sentenced, as you mentioned, to two, two years in prison for hooliganism. Did you at all expect that kind of sentence being um, delivered on you? Or what did you did, when you went into the sort of... Uh, the church did that? Uh, no, when we went to the church, we didn't expect a uh, criminal case and uh, we didn't expect, of course, uh, attention, let's say, so huge support from the West and uh, neither we didn't expect so much, you know, hatred ab uh, mm. about us from Russian propaganda. So when, when you see your face like every day on TV and somebody uh, wearing you know nice suit uh, telling that you are like a big evil for, for Russia and you're kind of a shame of your country, etc., it's kind of a surprise. Uh, but you know, um, you just like start to live with it. You understand that these people mostly doing their work and uh, do not understand to 100% what they are doing. The result of this propaganda, not like against us, but in general, is very sad because uh, during the last four years since the annexation of Crimea, quasi-Nazi groups start, start to appear in, in Russia and they openly beat uh, people on the streets, they beat uh, people who are going to the protest demonstrations, they can like beat you with a metal tube near your, uh, near the door of your house and nobody will even open a criminal case against them. Mm. They are supported by police, they are supported by state, they are openly, you know, express that we will throw away all the enemies of the of the people, how they call us, or enemies of the state from the country. Hmm. You said, um, uh, and I think both of you mentioned this a little bit, that there was a, a change when in, in sort of the atmosphere in the, in the climate getting harder and harder, particularly after the annexation of Crimea and the war in Ukraine. Would you agree to that both? What, would, what actually, can you explain what happened from your point of view, being a musician and uh, what happened um, in what, what, what made it so difficult for you to perform? Uh, yeah, you mean since the... Since the Crimea. Yeah, yeah. I think that the, there is a button in uh, probably each Russian head, which uh, I call kind of imperialistic button. And uh, mm. in uh, <coughs> uh, 2014 it was pushed. Mm. Uh, by Putin, very uh, he did it in a, in this special way. So the occupation of uh, Donbass and Crimea. Uh, so that's why he a lot of people uh, just went crazy uh, because they started thinking like their uh, grandfathers did uh, 40 years ago. So we we have it in mind all the time. But it, when you you should switch it off forever when you are young. Mm -hmm. And when you are 30, 40, it's hard to switch it off. Mm -hmm. so, but it's still there, the button. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that I, I think that I, I can see it like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and after that, a lot of my friends really uh, changed their mind about everything. Uh, and uh, a lot of uh, quite educated intellectuals mm -hmm. uh, start thinking that it's a good good thing that uh, Russia is getting more and more important in the world. They don't necessarily like Putin. Some of them hate Putin, but that doesn't matter. Uh, they want to s Russia to be big, great again. <laughs> 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 and mm. forever and ever and ever. And uh, they, they want to hate uh, uh, those people who don't like this idea. Mm -hmm. And who are problem. those? Are the, for example, you both and yeah. the West. Yeah. 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 <laughs> in that sense, how do you know? How do you sort of? I think uh, people in the West, uh, you you guys just don't know uh, what uh, Russian state is uh, telling about you on Russian state TV. So, Europe is an enemy. Welcome to reality. Every day from TV, European values they called an enemy's values, and. Uh, 
especially after like some package of st sanctions um, after the Crimea situation, uh, they start to do it in more brutal ways. The most cynical part of the story is that these people are going to vacations here. Mm. And yeah. you can like easily find their faces like in the center of Amsterdam, for example, like the main propaganda guy, uh, Kisilov. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Who was That's like very strange, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's the state propaganda that is very strong, and people of believe it because it's it's, uh, it's the state-run television and radio and uh, this all is the, the big mm. all the TV channels belongs to friends of Putin mm -hmm. and controlled by the state, mm -hmm. all of them, mm -hmm. one hundred percent. Mm -hmm. We had one channel, mm -hmm. one independent channel, TV Rain, which yeah. was shut it down after the Crimean annexation and now working only on the network. Hmm. Can you describe, because I've seen some pictures when, for example, in TV shows where they have pictures of all the state enemies and it could be journalists, uh, NGOs, you probably you've been on the face of those pictures as well. Is that uh, common that it happens that sort of Europe called enemies of the state, just as many uh, NGOs, for example, are. Okay. This uh, rhetoric, uh, this, I mean, this lexic which uh, they use is, uh, like, it's pure Soviet Union Seven, lexic. 70s, 60s of Soviet mm. Union, yeah, so mm. And it's like a pure copy. Uh, and, well, they are talking like, we don't need this, you know, we don't need this West to be, like, even closer to our country, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But, for example, we had World Cup this summer, and a lot of people went uh, to Russia just, you know, to watch the football. And all this propaganda shit was broken up by people were just see how how cool it is when you know people are going to Russia and celebrate something in the streets, wow, we can have tourists, etc. Uh, but, I mean, that was just several, several months. After that, it's, ago, it's again life like it was before. Mm -hmm. And during the World Cup, all the protests were banned. You, cannot, you could not just hold a single poster like somewhere. Mm -hmm. you, win, you will be arrested for like 15 days and probably more. Mm. Um, One thing that um, uh, others have talked about is what, what, that many of you felt like a window of opportunity there into, in the winter of 2011 and before the new inauguration of Putin because there were mass protests, demonstrations in the streets, tens of thousands of people on the streets, in the street, streets protesting. Uh, and then it was very brutally shut down on May 6th, 2012. Um, what happened to all those people? I mean, are they? Uh, I mean, some of them I know were in prison, but many, um, not not tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. What, what, how sort of have they just been too afraid to speak their mind after? Uh, a lot of people left the country. We had a term called immigration of disappointment in the end of uh, 2015. Uh, that was like huge number of people. Who intellectuals who just left the country because they could not even work there. And um, some, some mm. of people, some of these people who were like leaders of the protest have several criminal cases against them. Some of them were jailed for several years. Uh, a lot of people were actually jailed mm. after mm. this protest. Mm. Mm. Um, but, well, since last year, I think we have uh, kind of a new wave of uh, a protest, and it's mostly teenagers. It's like 17, 18, 19 years old girls and boys who doesn't give a fuck what, what they are showing on TV. They do not watch it at all. And they just go to the, to the streets, and we have a small movement called Endless Protest, who are like made by 16, 17 years people. And uh, they arrest them like every day. Uh, they are going around Moscow. 
uh, calling to free all the political prisoners. And if, if uh, police arrest some of them, new guys coming, and uh, it's just going, going, going for several months. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's just one thing. Another thing, uh, for example, in the end of October, we had, um, so we have so-called network case. It's a criminal case against um, anti-fascists and uh, so teenagers around Russia who were captured and tortured by FSB workers, like Czechists. Uh, in the end of October, their parents went uh, to the front of FSB building, which is a former KGB, and started to speak that their kids were tortured and around 300 people were there listening to them, and even police, which who come to you know to arrest people, start to listen to them. I've been in this demonstration. I participated it, and um, well, it's it's very important. I think we have kind of a presentation about this uh, case, if we can like show it. Okay. Um. You want to show the pictures of the ones who were uh, from um, your slides. So there is, to sum up, there is sort of a new generation of demonstrators in the streets, but because the sort of the old ones got too scared or left the country or so, but they are, but what the, the start of the protest was actually against corruption, wasn't it? I mean, the first of the young um, teenage movement in that sense, it was uh, Navalny who, who not actually, only corruption. not only corruption. Corruption is a really huge case uh, mm. because we have Alexei Navalny, mm. who is uh, one of the leaders of the Russian opposition, and he became famous because of his anti-corruption investigations. So, for example, we had Dmitry Medvedev, who used to be a president, who is a prime minister. Uh, Alexei Navalny made a film about him, uh, anti-corruption film. So. If you can imagine, this film last year became the most popular film in Russia for the year. It was not shown on the cinema at all. Uh, state was trying to, you know, to ban it, to somehow get out of it. But it's number one. In the internet. Yes, mm -hmm. in the internet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But internet can bring people to, to streets. That's why they they start to, you know, to censor it. Mm. And but there have been attempts to close down the internet or to close down like social media uh, applications, just you mentioned uh, Telegram, for example. This, this also, there is a, yeah, uh, they try, they try to, to control this yeah, as well. Trying, yeah. it, how has that worked? Uh, so very simple. For example, I'm, I'm not allowed to leave Russia. I'm, I'm banned from leaving the country. And that happened because I was, um, we organized uh, an action in April in the front of FSB building. We were throwing colorful paper plants to the, to the wall of FSB. Uh, and FSB is the security police. Yes, yes. it's a KGB. Yeah, like former a KGB. Yeah. Former KGB, but it's the same. It's totally the same. Um, so we went there with a with these paper plans, because paper plan is a symbol of the only Russian... Oh, no, it's not this. It's a Crimea. It's another... <laughs> one, one second. Um, okay, у нее нету, да, у нее нету. I will show you later paper plans, but it's... Anyway, just... just. The so protest on it's the like continent. 12 people being like immediately arrested. We spent like 48 hours in, in one cage, uh, which was quite romantic, I think. Uh, <laughs> in, in the central, central police station, uh, like we were talking all the night uh, about everything. So, and um, after that, they gave me 100 hours of community service works, uh, which I didn't have time to do. And they wrote a special, firstly, they wrote a, a huge penalty for me. 
it's uh, around like seven thousand uh, dollars, which I don't have, so uh, I didn't pay it. Uh, so, and after that, they they wrote a special paper that I'm not allowed to leave Russia. I cannot go to you know to train to airport and so on. Uh, I mean, I can, but I will not go in. Uh, so, yeah, and uh, it's not, you know, this the FSB decided to ban Telegram because the head of the Telegram, Pavel Durov, he refused to give the codes to FSB to read our messages. It's not the only example of banning. A actually, he lo they lost. They, they, they couldn't, uh, they can't ban Telegram. They, they tried, but uh, in the end of the story, uh, a lot of bank systems start, stopped to work, a lot of, um, you know, program systems on the, for example, train um, companies st stopped to work. Uh, they are kind of stupid, but Telegram is still alive, even without VPN. So this is, uh, yeah. So thank you. Thanks to the te technology, <laughs> it didn't manage to close you it down. It's like Messi probably. Telegram is like Messenger. It's like China, Russia, yeah, amazing yeah. Um, thing. But let's go back to a little bit to, to uh, when you were in, in, in prison, Masha, uh, because you also wrote um, a book about... Why can't we talk about it? Your, uh, your what happened and how, how was the... Uh, um, the situation in, in prison, and you mentioned somewhere, I think, that you were forced to, to sue, to, uh, so, um, not so, to, so, um, you, to make uniforms for the... Uh, it's not only uh, me. Not only you, but all Russian others, prisoners yes, yeah. uh, are going to labor camps, so it's not prisons like in Europe, it's labor camps. All prisoners should work 12, 14 hours per day, uh, six days a week, without, I mean, the salary is like two, three dollars per month, and they saw police uniforms and uniform for Russian army, about which you heard before. Mm. And uh, people are living not in the cells, but in the barracks. It's like 100 people living together without hot water, with two toilets, uh, with no medicine and no, no normal food. But it's not about me, it's about all people who, mm. who just like start this road, you know, mm. of imprisonment. Mm. Because there were many sort of international uh, support. Yeah, you got a lot of the international support. Pussy Wright got a lot of international support when you were when you were uh, um, sentenced and convicted. Convicted, and many were speaking out, asking to you um, f to. Um, or demanding that you would be free, set free. Um, but there is another case that we uh, would like to talk about a little bit as well, and it's the case of Oleg Sensov, uh, the Ukrainian film director. And, and uh, uh, um, can we show the presentation of uh, the network case uh, before the Sensov? Full, the full presentation? Uh, well, yes, why not? Что? Она там, я ее видела. Там она. Well, we can get back to that because that is more up to date. It's, it's more closer to today. And we'll just mention, we'll talk a little bit about this. That's what I did. Um, before, okay? And on the computer. Is it this one? What она? Почему? Я ее видела. So these are the more current. Oh. <laughs> these are some of the more current cases of young people being. So people who, who you see on the pictures, it's like, it's almost teenagers. And uh, they were captured in different cities uh, around Russia. Almost all of them were tortured by electroshockers. And these people need help. So the, the, this is some of the, this is the, these are pictures of some of them. You need to say you need to say something about some of the pictures. So. 
So they were, they were arrested? Were they also sentenced or were they just no, the case is still going. Uh, mm -hmm. The case is still going. That's why, uh, I mean, in Moscow that was in the front of FSB, but around Russia, their parents mm -hmm. were also like going uh, to protest mm -hmm. with, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with the signs. Mm -hmm. um, and they are protesting. I, and, and they are protesting, in particular. They are against protesting Lincoln. against. Uh, FSB torturing their children and uh, like arrest them for nothing. This is no, uh, how to say it, criminal base, let's say, on their uh, life. So the only thing they did was to protest in the, their young people who protested on the streets and they were arrested. No, no, no. no they, they, they to just put to it to in the internet chats. Internet chats. It's okay. just uh, the whole <coughs> case is built on those ch chats, internet okay. chats. Mm -hmm. So there is no they evidence of any uh, danger. Mm -hmm. uh, but Thank they, you. and sometimes they, they provoke those chats and uh, provoke, uh, they organize in some kind of community. I mean, uh, of uh, FSB officers. Mm -hmm. uh, they they did it especially, and to to make uh, it a big case to to have new uh, stars on the uh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so, that's so it, the that's thing is that the uh, this network case was created by FSB. Yeah. They what they are telling like why they arrest uh, guys because they were like. Terroristic, mm. uh, terroristic or community, or community, but the yeah. only base wh what they what they had is um, exchanging messages, messages yeah. which is like without any, you know, um, how, how to say the Kazakhist one proof, mm. approvements. Mm -hmm. Proof. Yeah. So, so these messages didn't con messages didn't contain any threats or anything. It was yeah, just, yeah, ju normal just chat pe people memory. chattering mm -hmm. about anything mm -hmm. in the internet. So uh, just sharing opinions yeah. about uh, what's going on in Russia. But so nothing really uh, serious. But then they put some some other facts and trying to organize this criminal case. Uh, and of course, a lot of facts are false. Mm -hmm. False. Mm -hmm. so well, uh, I mean. How this how these cases are created? They capture people, they, for example, bring them to the forest. Uh, they talk to them that yeah. they will like cut their legs if they will not write uh, that they are guilty and they are part of the terrorist communities, or they torture people by electroshockers, or they, I mean, there are a number of methods, yeah. and uh, some of the people really wrote that they are like a part but this is not confess, true because confess, these people yeah. were tortured mm. and uh, like Oleg Sinsov about whom uh, I will speak uh, in several minutes uh, well he didn't write that that he is guilty but he was also tortured and also they wanted him to write that he is a terrorist yeah. and uh, they need uh, they start this case uh, I think in, in spring um, and the case, which is very similar, called Nova Vilice, they start the same period because they wanted to show that they kind of work, you know, uh, before the World Cup. But the result is several totally, totally innocent people were tortured, uh, still in, in prisons in different cities of, of Russia. And, uh, Six in prisons, four. Under arrest, home Under arrest. Home, yeah. home arrest. Mm. If we should, if we should uh, get New back to Oleg Sinsov. Mm. No, ah. no, yeah. Sorry. If we go, go back to Oleg Sinsov, because we, uh, well, when, uh, his, the spokesperson of Oleg Sinsov was supposed to be here, but she had problems with the passport. Uh, Natalia Kaplan couldn't come. Uh, so, and I know you have been. Uh, um, uh, paying a lot of attention and, and, uh, to the case, Masha. But Alexisov was—he uh, was—he's Ukraine. 
He's Ukrainian, and he was uh, protesting against, or he was not protesting, he was just uh, uh, saying that he was against the annexation of Crimea, which was actually his crime in that sense, but he was accused of being a terrorist and sentenced to 20 years in prison for this. Uh, and this goes back, I guess, to what you said before, both of you, that when it comes to Crimea and Ukraine, the sort of the state uh, is even more looks even more severe on your criticism against the state. Um, now he has spent uh, four years in in prison. Now, what yeah. do what do we know about? Because he started a hunger strike in May this year for 140 days, I think. Yeah. Almost died doing it, and the hunger strike was there too in order to to. He wanted all the Ukrainian political prisoners, some 65, yeah, being be uh, re released from released, prison. Yeah. But what, what do we know more about his situation um, uh, in prison? You mentioned, Masha, that he, was, uh, he had been tortured. Is there anything else you want to comment on? Because it was about his time in prison. Um, well, Oli Shinsov is a filmmaker. Uh, he was really arrested in Crimea during the period of annexation in spring of 2014. He was uh, sent to Russia. Russian court gave him 20 years of prison, but the main thing is that this person is even not citizen of Russia. I mean, he's mm -hmm. Ukrainian citizen, he has Ukrainian passport, he doesn't have Russian passport. In all documents in prison, they say that Oleg Sinsov, citizen of the Ukraine Respu Republic. Um, I'm campaigning for, like, calling to his freedom and raising attention on his case for two years already. Uh, first action we made uh, for him, we went to Yakutsk, which is like East Siberia, near his penal colony. We made a big banner, free sense of. Uh, after that, he was transported to another penal colony and we were continue this, and last thing we we did, uh, we we went to Crimea, which is a special story because uh, yeah, this is like Crimea. Uh, just behind this uh, like thing with a red star is a statue of Lenin uh, by the sentence Oleg Shinsov, uh was sentences, sentenced for the so-called preparation of bombing statue of Lenin in the Simferopol, uh, which he actually didn't prepare. And, um, well, Lenin is still there. They can be happy. Um, we were arrested like about four times. They broke all the iPhones, computer, uh, photo technique, and uh, when I was posted this picture, this Cossacks with uh, whips went to the cafe uh, saying that kind of uh, I am enemy of the state uh, and start to like whew, do this amazing uh, gestures. Uh, but we filmed it and I just, I cannot show you the video, but this is like really, uh, really interesting. I should probably download the video. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, he was sort of a... So yeah. he, he's, uh, he's now in prison near the Polar Circle and when he announced his hunger strike on May, uh, his only goal was not his own freedom but raising attention and freedom for all the Ukrainian citizens who were captured by Russian state and who are in Russian prisons now. In the same case, uh, Oleg Shinsov has Alexander Kolchenko, he's a uh, Ukrainian anarchist. Uh, he got 10 years and he also didn't do anything. I mean, the only thing you should know is all these people just did not do anything. And um, what, so this is all to shut down criticism and not to be have people uh, speak their minds about the situation and make it very simple. But I mean, uh, but 
what has also been uh, brought to many people's attention was uh, what you, all t you both have spoken about, the ill-treatment and even the torture in prison. And recently, or a couple of months ago, there was even a, uh, someone, a per, uh, an organization in, in uh, Irina, uh, uh, and, and a human rights lawyer, Irina Birikova, she managed to, to get hold of a, of a video where a political prisoner was tortured. And she got hold of this, we don't know really how, but we know that it was filmed by one of the, uh, of the guards in the prison. Um, and now it's, uh, it's slowly unfolding that there are, and, and there are court cases now against the guards. But um, what do you think will happen? I mean, because do you think, uh, do you, do you think that these, this, tor this kind of treatment, oil treatment, and, uh, is just uh, a few sort of rotten apples, <laughs> whatever you want to say, or is this actually sanctioned, you think? I or think that each video like this is extremely important because, you know, yes, tortures are happening like in prisons every day, but if you have an option to save even one human life, you should do it. And uh, that that's why uh, she published this video and it that was like really big attention mm. on this. Mm. Yeah, she had to leave the country and she was threatened uh, at that point. But I think they will be punished, uh, but some of them, mm. uh, I, I mean the guards. But you uh, think, yes, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it, it w won't change the situation because it's a system that works like that. Mm. It's just uh, to calm down uh, the media so uh, they, they probably go to jail, may, or maybe they will be kicked out of their jobs, but mm. uh, nothing will change in the system, because it's for everybody, it's not only for, for political, it's a system that works like this, it's probably from St Stalinist uh, type of uh, behavior. So it's much more wi widespread yeah. than just that movie and that, uh, that yeah. particular situation. Now, uh, and um, uh, Oleg Sensov, he was also awarded the Sakharov Prize from the European Parliament. He, I mean, of course, he didn't, couldn't get it, but his, they still have um, awarded him. Uh, and this is for his human rights work. What, what kind of reaction does this get in... in oh, oh, sorry. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Does this at all have any effect? Does this at all have any effect? I mean, criticism from the outside world, from international movie directors and so forth. Does it? Will it have any effect on some sort of situation? You think? Or is, would it movie. be the opposite? I mean, there he's given the Sakharov Prize. So his ah. um, other international movie directors have, have been protesting him against him being uh, unfairly tried and, uh, and so on. I mean, of on. course this it's important. Yes, of course it's important. It's just, I mean, I'm, I'm not agree that uh, this doesn't change uh, anything. I, I was, uh, I mean, I was in prison and I remember like what is important and what is not because if you are there and you are forgotten. It's. I think that this is the most nightmare you can ever, mm. you know, receive. Mm. Imagine. Mm -hmm. Imagine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, well. Yeah. It's, mm. It works. Yeah. So it's actually about people knowing that you are there and you're being treated uh, badly, or you're in prison. It's like the, the outside world knowing that's very important, even though nothing really. You won't be re re released, perhaps, the but still. The uh, Sakharov Prize is a statement of mm. European Parliament, mm. Parliament, and I think it's uh, it's important. And uh, it's well, if you look to, for example, to Russian propaganda, they worked uh, on this case as well. They're saying, like, start to joke that he can, you know, spend this uh, prize in the, you know, prison shop, etc. So some mm -hmm. cynical mm -hmm. things. Uh, but reaction happening and well for some people for some people that means uh, a change of their imprisonment to home arrest 
is just, I mean, it's a steps. And you don't know when the result will come. And I think that if people who are torturing people have the prison term and punished, it's also a result. Because these concrete people will not, you know, probably kill somebody. Yes, uh, the system works, uh, I totally agree, on Stalin's methods. And without a political will, you cannot, you know, change it, change it like in general. But you can save people's lives. And we are talking about this now, I think. Mm -hmm. And you have a. Uh because you mentioned before, and you talk, we talked about the propaganda and state television and being so massively sort of influencing people's minds, but there are a few sort of uh, media outlets or what you want to call, like, for example, Media Zona, uh, which you started some years ago. Can you tell us a little bit about, do you have a... Um, I have just a, a name, Media Zona, but it's a media outlet which we started with Nadia and Peter when we've been released. It's only court journalism in Russia. Uh, it covers police violence, prison violence, political court trials, and uh, it's a small team of independent journalists. Mostly of them, uh, majority of them were fired uh, from different media because they refused to cover the annexation of Crimea in the way of like state wanted them, and it's our old friends. And um, there were a lot of, you know, uh, critiques from the beginning, like nobody will read it, everybody knows that it's hell there, and nobody wants m more hell in, the, in their life, and so on. But in three years, it became one of the most uh, quotated and uh, popular media in Russian internet. In the, on the top 10, between big, you know, holdings with a lot of money. And uh, I'm happy that it's not only, you know, Media Zona made an influence on Russian internet, other independent resources start to write about Russian prisons. And uh, the whole, you know, conversation about it stopped to be so closed and marginalized. Marginal? Marginalized. Marginal. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really cool. I mean, it's... I mean, when you understand that one article, if it is really, like, if a lot of people read it, can change the situation with a concrete person, and he, he or she will not be, like, in so danger like he or she was before. It means a lot. Mm -hmm. And we started it because we received a lot of this support uh, from people, so we decided to like give it forward. Mm. So, and um, I think I should mention that uh, Peter Verzilov, who is a publisher of Media Zona, uh, so he was poisoned. Uh, you've probably seen it on news. After, the, after he received uh, results of the investigation of murdering Russian journalists in Central Africa, uh, which was, you know, a big shock, f even, even for us. And uh, this is like also, I think, the, the difference between like six years ago and now. Um, it's getting more and more uh, dangerous. Is yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you think. And is the, how is he today? Because he's the editor of Media Sonia, uh, and he he yeah, almost yeah. died from the poisoning. Mm. But was it that bad? Or yeah, yeah. But he's up. Is he he's okay, okay now. now and yeah. he's, okay. he's better now. He's almost okay. But how does that must affect him? Everyone being subjected to that kind of. Uh, you can uh, find. Uh, there was a cool investigation in Nova Gazeta, mm -hmm. uh, in the resource which published this torture video as well, mm -hmm. about poisoning people who made investigation about uh, Prigozhin, mm. uh, like the cooker of Putin nice. and his uh, business. Mm -hmm. So it's a method 
mm. which he, use. he uses. Does this scare you? Oh, well, I mean, could, could it happen to anyone, do you think? Anyone I think yeah, say yeah, that yeah. in that conditions? Uh, well, conditions can be different. Now they are like this. Mm. Sometimes they use it, but they do it like uh, not for everyone. It's so they're choosing people, and you can be among them. But of course, it's not a total terror, but, no. uh, but it's frightening uh, the ones uh, on the to frighten the others. Yes, yeah, 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 of course. It silences people in that yeah. sense. And you, Michael, you, you decided you, you're living in Sweden now since uh, one and a half year, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, as a, I don't know the word in English, but Fridstads for yeah? And Guest and writer. Guest yes. writer, yeah. yeah. Um, can, you, can you just describe what made you leave the country and, and uh, uh, the, the, for us all, I mean, your situation was not that, perhaps not that dangerous that or might yeah. have been, but but you were more or less unable to to work. Can you tell us a little bit more? Uh, it, it was the, just the feeling of uh, 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 doing. Uh, I, I was, uh, probably I was a little bit tired of uh, all that stuff because uh, uh, someday I started to realize that. Uh, most of people doesn't appreciate, that doesn't want, want that uh, that kind of information uh, and that kind of art anymore. That's that, that what's up, what I thought uh, two years ago, because uh, the the situation. Uh, that's what we we're, we're talking about. Uh, people's minds changed a lot, and uh, it was hard to organize concerts harder than, than before because there, uh, there were a lot of uh, bands uh, for the concerts nowadays and usually they, they're uh, acting in a new way economically. So, the, uh, for example, the bosses of small clubs are frightened that their, their clubs will be closed by the authorities and so they refuse to organize any concerts like that. Mm -hmm. And some of them even uh, say that we uh, we don't agree with your political position. That's why uh, we, we cannot invite you for a concert. Uh, although we played like 20 times before. in this very club in yeah. Moscow uh, uh, before, it was like half a year ago, we were <laughs> suddenly uh, told that uh, they have another political view and uh, that's why they cannot uh, accept uh, uh, the band. But, uh, but that's not... The, the real point. The point is that uh, I, I think the situation will change for better. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, now it's uh, it's a bit uh, how to say pessimistic uh, for for the, the rock and roll music. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, of course there are lots of new good bands. And but uh, uh, there is a how to say this uh, uh, real trend. Uh, among young people too, which is which is n not good. Uh, to uh, uh, we have it, we call it hipster movement. Mm -hmm. uh, so people are pretending they are living in London already. Mm -hmm. So they are not just they don't care about street mm -hmm. ac uh, activities and this uh, protest. Uh, we have a lot of them in Saint Petersburg, and it, it's uh, they will of course grow grow to maybe. They will grow up to the protest or just mm -hmm. to mm, having political view of the of their own, but uh, that's also make the situation um, among the spectators and the listeners uh, not good for for bands like ours. Mm. Uh, and of course, we have these Navalny youngsters, mm. uh, as I call them. Uh, but uh, it's 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 very good. It's inspiring uh, uh, and. Uh, they are coming to the streets. They are very active, but still, the last action it, it, in Saint Petersburg it uh, collected only about 3,000 of those youngsters and not youngsters, mm -hmm. uh, and it was a real uh, protest against uh, uh, pension uh, uh, prolonging the age of pension. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not enough. It was uh, in Saint Petersburg. Ten years ago, it was uh, 20,000 mm -hmm. on the streets, mm -hmm. and now it's only three. Mm 
Mm. So th that's why I'm a bit uh, pessimistic about that. Mm -hmm. Do you share, or do you see, are you more optimistic about the future, Masha? Because you mentioned all these young people on, on Because I, I mean, new I, I'm not counting thousands. That's no. what probably I just, well, I just don't do it. Uh, because I was not, like, I never been a politician. I never dreamed on, you know, creating a political party with like huge uh, thousands of like people who I can approach for the protest. Uh, I wanted to do actions and um, I think it's, well. It's important. It's important, yes, of course. Mm. I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe, maybe it's not rational, but I, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not pessimistic. No. 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 <laughs> um, if you, should. Yes. <laughs> you should. You should be not pessimistic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have some. Uh, we have more time if there are any questions from the audience. Uh, I'm sitting a little bit strange. Yes. So uh, let's. Uh, I, I, I'll thank you for the, the session. And, and uh, uh, can we, before we start the questions, give them a warm hand, and uh, we'll continue afterwards. <laughs> ah, so I will. Play, I should play. Wait, no, wait, no, no, no. Wait. Ah. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, so uh, is there a mic maybe somewhere? Maybe a b before questions, we, we yeah. can listen one more song. No? It's yeah. by the end. Ah, by the end. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Do we have a mic for for the questions? Any volunteer? Yes, we do. There will be one more song at the end. Oh. Do you have a question? Over there. There borta. There are two frågor. Och här fram också. Där borta visste de först. I have been teaching sometimes at the universities in Russia. I know many teachers are losing their jobs now. Do you have any comments about this? That's one question. The other one is, are the protests increasing despite of the difficult situation you are in? Thank you. Протесты увеличиваются, ну как разрастаются, а и до этого про учителей, что теряют работу учителя. Действительно ли протесты усиливаются? Prefer just give my first name, and that is Marian. Okay, thank you. Maria has a question about teachers being fired. From the university, is there something you know? There are no mass protests of teachers in Russia, uh, for sure. And um, I mean, I, I don't know about uh, well, I don't know about uh, people losing jobs because they are teachers. They can, well, they can lose it if they are not agree with, you know, a general line of the state education easily. Yeah. And we have this post-Soviet Union, like everything, we have like post-Soviet Union, post-Soviet Union prisons, like post-Gulag, post-Soviet Union education, and it's everywhere. Because we didn't overcome Soviet past. For example, Germany had genocification and we didn't have this overcoming. And so it's still there. and. The worst thing that is growing, they opened a new monument of Stalin, you know, this like Stalin's head in the center of Moscow last year, like mm -hmm. the new one. And uh, it's not the only example. They're opening uh, in different cities new monuments of Dzerzhinsky, for example, the guy who started Red ter Terror, uh, the head of Cheka, which grow, which <coughs> grow to KGB. So teachers, I mean, I teachers know. should just teach the state program, and I mean, I knew people not so much who were like left the job because they didn't want to teach like this. 
and they can like they go they can find a job on private school but for people they are expensive it's not for everybody okay so there was a question in the back and one in the front yeah right hi my name is shant uh, I come from two places that are com uh, strongly affected by the Russian state, so I'm Syrian and Armenian, and I wanted to ask a question. If there's any discourse that is being discussed among Russian activists about Russian involvement in Syria, is that ever in the public discourse? That's one thing. And the second question is, you mentioned the World Cup. Uh, and there's also two debates here, and just like sanctions, I believe they don't work because they affect the people. And then, you know, the idea behind uh, not supporting the World Cup in Russia is it could benefit certain people. Do you think it benefited people that needed some economic boost, or do you think it would just use to whitewash the Russian state? I think sanctions should be against officials, against government like state officials who are stealing money from Russian people right. and not against Russian people. I mean, Russian people are not, you know, guilty on anything. And um, uh, about Syria, there is just, well, in state media, this topic... There is no по телеку вообще постоянно говорят про то, как типа Россия дичайше спасла всех от Айсиса. А, но имеется в виду no criticism, no criticism on the public level. So only some small communities share information in the internet, but no public criticism, of course. But we are right. On TV, yeah, on TV, this topic somehow became bigger. Uh, during last, I think, year, year, half of the year, year, uh, just like this amazing Russian army saving everybody, like, in Syria, uh, yeah. in Syria, yeah. They are talking about that a lot, with pictures and so on. And, uh, of course, like, this... And about the Olympics, uh, I think it, uh, they made a lot of money. I mean, uh, uh, this gang, Kremlin gang, the, those who built those stadiums, uh, billions stolen. That's why it was done. So, it, it, and of course, people got nothing. A lot of, all, a lot of those stadiums are empty now. So uh, people just uh, lack their pensions their uh, salaries that's why it's going they're going down the salaries so that's because of uh, the only olympics and, and, uh, uh, and the world small cup mm. yeah. the similar with the world cup yeah but yeah, yeah we, we, that's mm. what we're talking mm. about yeah, world mm. cup okay uh, there was a question up here friend Yes, hello, my name is Charlotte. I have heard that farmers in Ukraine and Russia, they want peace and they feel squeezed and they need help from the West, um, that the West will take some kind of support for them. Um, so I wonder, is the feminist movement and these farmers working together in some kind of peace movement? Yeah, Farmers, you said. Ну, то есть, грубо говоря, сельскохозяйственные работники как-то объединяют свои усилия в протесте с, против системы с феминистками. А вот напрягись. It's the most weird thing about like Russian activism I ever heard. Um, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I just I, I, I don't know I don't know what to say. I I think well farmers in Russia Yeah, small farmers feel there uh, in Ukraine and Russia they they say they want support uh, from the western countries farmers uh, you know ecological farmers. They need In Ukraine? Yes, and in Russia and I have Russia. heard because I mean that kind of movement. So I wonder, what can the feminist movement go and help 
these farmers and this peace organization. But you seem very how? surprised. Mm -hmm. Yes. How? how, <laughs> how, how <laughs> she needs what to point? contemplate on that a like, bit. Like, you know, about it feeding, feeding cows or, or how? <laughs> no, supporting. <laughs> because uh, I think um, many people uh, don't count about farmers, but proper farmers. Um, You are living in another reality, I think. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. We um, culti they cultivate the land, you know? And they, they have, as I, if I have read the Russian uh, history, been suppressed during thousands of years. Yeah. Yes, they have. So uh, I, I think, um, and because I am in this kind of... Um, uh, climate and environment movement, I got this news from Ukraine and Russia. And I think that's very interesting that things happen there, but I feel so alone. So that's why I said, can, is there any, um, do you work together? Can you work together? I don't know. So that's why it was my question. But can I add to that question if, if there is some... <laughs> but there are not only like political protests against uh, laws and torture and things like that. There are other uh, uh, protests in Russia as well that comes to more clo things that are more close, close to your uh, sort of salaries or to your pension and things like... You mentioned it before, maybe uh, when you're, you don't have money to, enough money to buy food or things like that, the sanctions. I mean, uh, of course, there, are, there must be movements in that direction as well. I right? never heard about movements. No. I I know I know just people from the countryside and I know their life. Uh, I never heard about like corporations of like eco producing, etc. I know that if you like if you want something bigger than just uh, selling a cheese and milk from your cow, uh, for example if you want to build your business, uh, it, it became a nightmare because you, because we have a corruption everywhere. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you should pay for, like. But anyway, it should be done. I mean, mm -hmm. in the end, we all should should unite, uh, feminists and farmers and workers and every everybody. But it should be done. Yeah, because I mean, um, sort of a comment to that. I mean, what would you say? Is is there any real opposition, political opposition in in, in uh, Russia today that is strong enough to sort of be uh, uh, sort of uh, threatening to the Putin regime, or, or has that been scattered as well? Are they, I mean, is how, how strong I is the I don't think they're strong enough uh, no. today, but they will be uh, when, the they go, when they are supported by 5% of the population, uh, mm -hmm. or 3% is enough, mm -hmm. then, uh, then they will become bigger and more powerful. Mm. But now it's not uh, the strongest point for the opposition as a whole no. in Russia. There is a question down below. Hi, and I just wanted to say to you both, thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you. My question is, how dangerous is it for you to sit here today? What do, you uh, do you feel any potential sanctions that get like... Um, when you get back, if you get back to Russia, uh, is this an action that's going to be criticized? Um, well, of course they are. For coming unhappy. here, and what are you at all worried? I, I just don't care, but they will be unhappy, of course. I mean, I left the country like uh, illegally. Illegally, mm -hmm. let's say. <laughs> um, Let's say illegal. <laughs> I don't, um, but I just I don't think about this. Really. <laughs> and I'm not worried because I, I li I'm here in Sweden, <laughs> so, anyway. so I, I'm gonna stay for a while. Uh, and uh, 
Of course, and I, I think uh, uh, Masha also had this experience uh, to be announced as an enemy of Russian people. You were announced uh, a lot of times, me too. So uh, another announcement won't hurt. Of course, we don't want to be poisoned, <laughs> but, but uh, uh, I hope that it will not happen. Okay, two more questions, and then... I think I was first. Okay, sorry, I didn't see. <laughs> okay, hi, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Masha, you mentioned that these youngsters needed help. What would be the best way of helping them? Would it be writing articles in the newspaper or directly writing letters to them through Amnesty International, whatever? Well, I will be happy if you guys will help Media Zona because it's only us who are making it like a life. And it's, it's very important for us. Uh, and it's, as I said before, it's only media who, who is writing about tortures, about police violence, and about people who has political courts against them. Uh, and I'm here for that. Besides that, I think, like, if you want to do something immediately, you can write any of these uh, people to jail, uh, especially uh, Oleg Shinsov, because he is like he was worrying a lot uh, how the world is <coughs> accepting, re react and accept he, his hunger strike. I, I was uh, in very contact with uh, his lawyer, and still I am. So this is w what you can do, I think. Um, just to follow up on that, um, what are the, I mean, because NGOs or anyone else, or no journalists perhaps, uh, given uh, who accept money from abroad are considered foreign agents in, in Russia, isn't that right? Can you, is Media Zona is not NGO in Russia, but yes, you're right, we have a special law against uh, NGOs who take money from, from the West, like from the Western funders, funds, let's say. Uh, they call them foreign agents. And they can even be... Uh, and person. they can, like, shut them down, mm. exactly. Mm -hmm. But Media Zona is a media outlet, so you are... Media Zona is a media outlet and it's not... Uh, we never took money from, like, any state fund. No. Never. Mm. Uh, it's all like crowdfunding and uh, so private individuals and people mm -hmm. and people, yes. And uh, I believe it's how how it should work. Mm -hmm. I think we have two more questions, and then uh, I think we need to finalize the this session. Um, hello, my name is Monica. Um, I have friends in Russia who were. Um, back in 2000, sorry, 2012, we were very um, up in arms and went to protest and they were in Balotnaya and um, after the war with Ukraine and Crimea, uh, they stopped and they became loyal to, you know, they think, um, uh, well, Putin is maybe not in the regime we have, no, it's not, it's not the best, but we need mm -hmm. stability, we need... Uh, unity against this Europe which is against us and I find that it's become a lot more difficult to talk about problems in Russia with my Russian friends since 2014-15 since, uh, um, and also when when we bring up these things we read uh, or reports from Russian organizations then they will see it as oh it's just Europe trying to bash us Russians and you Europe oh you're sanctioning us now I don't get paid now the um, mm. the food is becoming more expensive and how can we break that cycle? Putin put uh, sanctions against Russia and that's why uh, there are no European like products there. It's not Europe who made it. It's very simple. You can find it on the internet who wrote this law and show to your friends. And uh, each uh, thing you can just like show what's going on in real uh, because it's facts and um, what they create is just a um, balloon of propaganda and 
it breaks if you show people facts. If you have time, of course, for this. Because you, you should have time and patience. Um, but I find that when I, you know, they, um, it's my friends and my family also in Russia, they will say, they also know, because they also have facts, that uh, Sweden is becoming a Muslim country, that Sweden is banning Christmas, you know, all these things they have. Sweden banning Christmas? No, <laughs> fake news. <laughs> oh. Fake news, yeah. yeah. Yes, and... and Invite it's, them it's to really Sweden. Mud mudding the waters of, I think, there was... In, during the Soviet period and behind the Iron Curtain, a lot of people were very, very good at telling propaganda from fact. And now that is becoming a lot more difficult. Because, well, y you are totally right about fake news and about all of that, but uh, communities exist uh, against this. Like, alive people's conversations, meetings, uh, going to, you know, countries to each other, it, it breaks all of that. Because people see that it's not true. Nobody is banning, nobody banning Christmas in uh, Sweden. And uh, nobody wants, you know, something bad for Russia here. And it's not a Muslim state here. And so on. So it's just, you, you, they can, you know, brainwash people. They cannot cut eyes, you know, from, from people. And uh, if, they see what is going on in real, they never will believe this shit again. I'm, I'm sorry we need to, we almost have to finish, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we talked about that a little Probably bit before also. A lot, a lot of them. You would yeah, uh, just a little uh, yes, addition. Yes, yes. Uh, the, uh, sometimes the problem is that with people that they are touring all over Europe, but they don't see it. I, I mean, uh, it's not enough to have eyes. Mm. Uh, it's a bit schizophrenic. I met a lot of people like that, so they said, I've, I've lived in Germany for two years, and I know what I'm saying. Europe is going down, and uh, what I, what I, uh, you mm. cannot prove it. Mm. You should, we should wait. It's a kind of schizophrenic state of mind. They are uh, trying to defend their own slavery position by talking about the greatness of Russia and the death of Europe. Mm. That's the, th the thing. It, it, we will overcome it, of course, in some years, but now you cannot prove it, really. Sometimes they say, I, I got three brothers living in, in, in Sweden. What, do you, what are you telling me about Sweden? I know that there is a big problem that m Muslims are killing people on the streets. Uh, you, uh, my brothers told me. So everybody's having his own uh, uh, informational channel. And of course, with, with uh, Russian fake news doubled on that, it mm. makes it real for them. Mm. So their eyes uh, are blind sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, you, we will uh, finish off with um, one more song from yeah. you. Uh, can you just say a few words about it just before you answer? Oh. Because it's in, in Russian and, and there will be uh, the lyrics will be in Swedish as well. But it's called "Forgive Us Ukraine." Yeah, it's called yes. "Forgive yes. Us Ukraine," and it was written in uh, 2014 after the an annexation of Crimea and the uh, occupation of Don Donbass. So it was my natural reaction to that kind of uh, aggression, uh, and I performed it in Kiev and in Moscow and St. Petersburg and. Uh, and of course, I was announced uh, the enemy of Russian people, <laughs> like, <laughs> like so usual. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's, uh, yeah, uh, people are uh, very sensitive on this point. Mm. So uh, if you know, you want to know the person in, in, in Russia, you should ask who owns the Crimea. Mm. That's the main question, yeah. yeah. So, and a lot of my friends changed their mind. They, uh, they are telling now that Crimea was always ours, we should uh, possess it, and uh, that's why I'm here. Yeah, and that's why this is so diff uh, yeah. dangerous to sing this song in, in <laughs> Russia. Please, Mikhail. Yeah, I'll try.
Бить братья врага Это годы страданий И позор на века Мы с тобой виноваты Недостойные свободы, сыны В головах наших вата И сердца в плену войны Ты прости нас, Украина Это рушится русский Рим Мы не ведаем, что творим Ты прости нас за Крым и за Донбасс Все протесты и митинги зря Мы вскормили в Кремле упыря Ты прости Ядерной пылью Все воруем и врем Как рабами мы были Так рабами помрем Когда упырь и сдохнет Что останется здесь? У вас небесная сотня У нас рабская месть ты прости нас, Украина Это рушится русский Рим Мы не ведаем, что творим Ты прости нас за Крым и за Донбасс Все протесты и митинги зря Мы вскормили в Кремле упыря ты прости нас, Украина. Ты прости нас, Украина. Thank you.